praise of the Lord over here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for tuning in to Facebook. Different areas, Texas. Amen. Glory to God, South Carolina. Amen. Uh, uh, Hillsville. Uh, Gay Lacks. Those that are here. Yeah, amen. I hope I ain't missed somebody. But we thank you for tuning in to us this morning. If you hear me listening and you don't know Jesus Christ as your virtual Savior, I pray that you repent of your sins and give your heart and your life to Jesus. Before it's too late. Amen. Give the Lord an all of a great big Life is precious.
upon him. Lord, how mercy. Amen. I will not be shaken. I will not be moved. No matter what comes our way, church. Amen. Remain faithful. Remain strong in the power of His might. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel, and we'll start with verse chapter 47. Ezekiel chapter 47. And we'll start with verse 1. And afterwards she brought me again unto the door of the house. And behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stand toward the east. And waters came down from under from the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Then brought he me again, I mean, me out of the way of the gate northward, and led me about the way without unto the other gate by the way that looketh eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hands went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters, the waters were to the ankles. Verse 4, again he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters. The waters were to the knees and again the measure, measure a thousand and brought me through the waters were to the lawns. Verse 5, after he had measured a thousand and it was a river that I could not pass over for the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. And he said unto me, Son of man, how thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Let's pray. Our precious Heavenly Father, we come to you that you anoint me to bring forth thy word and rightly divide the word of truth. Lord, give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God has got to say. Lord, don't let our attention be attracted. Don't let it be looking to the left or looking to the right. But look straight ahead and hear the word of God that we may be blessed. And hear your word. Amen to what you've got to say to the people. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. And the church says, Amen. You may be seated. We see the Spirit of God moving in creation. Amen. God spoke into the Spirit of God, hovered over it. Amen. And brought it to an existence. We see a lot of times that the river, the waters, represents the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. And Jesus had told them it's expedient that I must go. If I do not go, the Comforter cannot come, which is the Holy Ghost. He's going to lead you. He's going to guide you. He's going to direct you. He's going to give you wisdom. He's going to give you power to overcome. Did you hear me? Amen. Listen to a lot of the theologians and the Bible scholars and amen. And we're all looking for that great revival when the Lord comes back. And amen. I, amen. I just don't think, amen, it can be a corporate, corporate, amen, revival when everybody gets in one mind and one accord. As he was mentioned in Sunday school class, on the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts chapter 2, there was all in one accord. Amen. Glory to God. They'd have been waiting for 10 days for the promise to come. Amen. Glory to God. And all of a sudden, they heard a mighty rushing wind. It filled the house and it blew out of the house into the streets. Amen. So what manner is this? The people said as the Spirit of God gave them the tongues. Amen. Come on. Amen. 
I believe it was a vision of the future for God's, amen, God's people in Ezekiel. Revealing what the body of Christ would be become as the end time drawing close. Amen. You said, Brother Fred, I don't feel nothing. Amen. Glory to God. You know why you don't feel nothing? What have you done this week? How much did you spend time in the Word of God? How much did you pray on a daily basis? How many of us have hunger and thirst after righteousness that we shall be filled? We're looking for a revival, but we're sure not making preparations in our lives to receive that revival. Come on, don't get quiet on me, please. Now the image of the Lord in the Bible, amen, almost always represents the Spirit of God. This vision clearly reveals a mighty outpouring of the Holy Ghost in the last days. This vision was so powerful, so overwhelming in scope that Ezekiel couldn't comprehend it. He couldn't even, amen, come in on the meaning. All he could do was to report it. In, a fa in fact, be before the vision was finished, the Lord stopped and asked Ezekiel, in verse 6, How do I see this? Do you understand what you're seeing? That I'm showing to you. It's up to you and me to get hungry. I can encourage you to come to church. I can encourage you, amen, to read and to pray on a daily basis. But it's up to you to do it. I can't be there to smack you on your hand. Cut that TV off. Take it. Close that internet. I wouldn't be welcome long in some of your houses probably. I can hear it now. Preacher, don't you have something else to do? God was asking Ezekiel in a sense, do you grasp the magnitude of what you're seeing? You're able to comprehend the prophetic power of this vision. Do you see what these rising waters speak of? If I could put a title on the message, it would be, Amen. The waters that's coming out of the sanctuary. The waters, the Spirit of God that's coming out of the sanctuary. God dwells in you and in me. What spirit, the Holy Ghost, flowing out of you? He said how, how they indicate the way of all things will end. He said, I'm coming back after a glorious church. He said, I'm coming back after a church without spot or blemish or wrinkle that has made herself ready. Amen. I can't make you ready. You can't make me ready. Amen. Go to God. It's up to me to get a hunger for the Lord. Help me, Lord Jesus, not to fall back, but to go forward. Help me not to stand still, but to go forward. Help me not to wonder, but let me see what you want me to see. Help me, Lord, revival to flow in my heart in my life. That amen, where these waters touch, amen, if it were dead, it shall become alive again. Amen, our homes, amen, our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, amen, where are their destiny? Where are they headed? God, help me. Amen, let the Spirit of God to flow in my heart and my life. Amen, John, the Baptist says there comes a man mightier than I am he said I'm not even worthy to stoop down and unlatch his shoelaces but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire go to God he is the baptizer the river of Jordan here he comes Jesus John the Baptist says, I don't need it. Amen. I, amen. I need you to baptize me. He said, for this time, 
amen, to be fulfilled. You need, amen, to baptize me, amen, in the river of Jordan. It wasn't being baptized because of sin, amen, when he rose out of the water, Jesus, amen, the Spirit of God descended upon him and filled him with the Holy Ghost. If he's got to have it, me and you need it also to empower us in these last days. Don't get quiet on me, church. We need a move of God. Our homes, our churches, our nation. Amen. God help us. Amen. To get a hunger for Jesus. If the rivers of living water, the Holy Ghost, then Pentecost was all of its glory and manifestation. Amen. Amen. God's presence was just the beginning. It was just a trickle. The flow of water from God's house would grow bigger and bigger. It would expand in width, depth, and volume. Power, restoration, and glory. The history of the church proves this. At Pentecost, the very beginning of the last days, Peter stood up and Job says, this is the last days. He's going to pour out his spirit. Peter announced that this water was flowing just as the Lord had promised. At that time, Peter and the others, 120 disciples, had, the, they had this water only to their ankles. But it grew from that amount in the years that follows. For the first few centuries of the church's existence, God's people were persecuted. Then were the Emperor Constantine. Constantine came to power. He opened up the prisons and the salt mines and released all the ministers and believers who had been enslaved. He also declared Christianity to be the official religious, religion of the empire. During those years of persecution, the church grew the most. That's when the waters began to increase in its flow. Those saints grew greatly in their knowledge and revelation of Christ. They enjoyed waters to their knees. Martin Luther was yet another vessel who brought the body, a man of Christ, into a new flow of faith. The waters that's flowing during the Reformation rose to the lawns of God's people as they grew in the greatest revelation of the cross and gained a deeper knowledge of Christ, power and glory. The rivers of a man life will crash just prior to the Lord's coming. And amen, I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss the flow. Amen of the Holy Ghost. Did you hear me? Oh, some's here and some's not. I believe this in Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Oh, I ain't got no wicked way, Brother Pruitt. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't done nothing I can think of. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and amen, glory to God. He will heal our lands. What is stopping the flow of the Spirit of God in your life, child of God? Amen. What is it? Amen, glory to God. You know what was in that well the first time? And amen, through the years, you let things, amen, amen, pile up. The hinder the flow and the block of the Spirit of God. 
Let the Holy Ghost, let the Holy Ghost dig it out of you until you see that last thing. Child of God, you know what it is in your life. I know what it is in my life. But I pray, say, God, if it's anything else that I'm overlooking, help me clean my house. And let your glory fill this temple. We all want to be sanctimonious. But we need a move of God. People are dying every day. And amen, glory to God. One funeral home told me, was doing a great side service and they said they had 20 bodies. And this is in our local area, back at the funeral home. People are dying, they're dropping like crazy. And amen, glory to God. What are you doing about your life and your relationship with Jesus? You say, I don't understand the Holy Ghost. I don't understand, amen, the Spirit of God. Get in the Word of God and say, God, help me, lead me, guide me by your Spirit. Amen, you're saved. Amen, maybe you need to be sanctified, set apart for the Master's use. Maybe you got an unclean tongue or, amen, a bad mouth or a bad attitude. God, sanctify me, clean me up, and fill me with with your spirit of God that I may grow therein. Help me to be a light. Every one of us want to see our children make it on the other side and grandchildren. But it's up to you and me to get a hunger for Jesus. Are you hungry? Are you listening? Are you listening? Amen. Glory to God. Help you overcome habits in your life that is not good for you. Oh, preacher, you're preaching good now. You got to start talking about my habits. If you got bad habits, if Jesus wouldn't do it, stop it. Stop it in the name of Jesus. The river of life requests just prior to the Lord's coming. This is foretold in the vision given to Ezekiel. God took the prophet on an amazing trip, carrying him a measuring rod. The Lord paced off a thousand cubits, about one third of a mile. At that distance, the Lord and Ezekiel began to walk in the water. The flow at this point was a man to the ankle. Ezekiel testified, he brought me through the waters. In verse three, and the Lord kept urging the prophet onward deeper and farther into the waters after another thousand cubits the waters came up to their knees and it was still rising do you see what was happening here Ezekiel was walking in the future right into our time yeah. Christians today live in the final thousand cubits of the river in this vision. We are in the very last measurement of the water. And Ezekiel says that when he stepped into the edge of this measure, the water was too deep for him. Too overwhelmingly, I could not pass over for the waters was risen, waters to swim in. He's telling us, the waters was over my head. The prophet Isaiah had a glimpse of the same river that appeared in Ezekiel's vision. Yet Isaiah saw even more according to the prophet. In the last days, God's people would enjoy great protection against all Satan's attacks. Isaiah 33 and verse 21 says, no gallows with oils, neither shall the gallop ships pass thereby. Isaiah is speaking here of slave-driven warships. He's given us a picture of the enemy, the devil, as he tries to launch an attack on all who swims in the great waters. It is a picture of total confusion. Satan is barking orders to his crew. Back down the hatches. Set sail, strengthen the mast. But nothing works. He and his demonic sailors can't even, amen, spread the sails to launch the warships. Meanwhile, all the slave-driven oarsmen set in order 
confusion. God is making it clear, crystal clear to us in this passage. His living waters are off limits to Satan. As the psalmist testifies in Psalms 35 and verse 4 and 5 and 6. Let them be confound and put to, to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devours my heart. Verse 5. Let them be as chaff before the wind. And let the angel of the Lord chase them. Chase them. Verse 6. Let their ways be dark and slippery. And let the angels of the Lord persecute them. And I'm here to tell you, church. Amen. I think it's in Ezekiel. Amen. Chapter 37, 36. God showed Ezekiel another powerful vision. He showed him a, a man, a valley of dry bones. And amen, go to God, which represented Israel and represents God's people. And he said, the Lord told Ezekiel, can these bones live again? He said, you saith the Lord. Amen, whatever you think is dead in your life with Jesus. God, are oh, you listening? God can bring it back. It ain't totally gone. I'm here to tell you that the Holy Ghost flow in your lives today and renew your spirit back with God. Can these bones live? The winds begin to blow and the were skeletons, the sinew, the flesh and all that stuff begin to form on the skeletons and they stand up as a mighty giant in the Lord. You ask me, can I live again? Yes, you can. Did you hear me? <laughs> Quit looking in your past. You can't move forward. Has anybody got in the car and when they got in the car still looking forward, you look back, driving down the road. You'd be a scary picture, you know that? So why do we look back? Something that had been done years ago. Somebody hurt me. Everybody gets hurt. Church, we get hurt. At work, we get hurt. Our children hurts us. Grandkids hurts us. Hello? We get hurt all the time. But greater is she that is in me than he that is in the world. Did you hear me? Everything, everything shall live whether the water, where the river cometh. In Ezekiel 47 and verse 9. When Ezekiel returned to the river bank, he stopped at astonishment. As he looked back, he saw very many trees on both sides of the rivers. These trees have been given life from the flowing water. Amen. They bear leaves that never fades. And the fruit brought wonderful healing. Life has sprung up everywhere. And these are towering, fruit bearing trees. The river of God will bring life. Wherever it goes, in these last days, we're going to see the flood of the Holy Ghost. Did you hear me? You say, I can't read and I can't pray, but you can sit there and watch that television. I can't read or pray, but you can go on our phone and gossip and tear somebody down. Oh, don't get quiet on me. Come on, honey. Get a song ready. I wish we had a back door, honey. We might have to run out of it, but we ain't got one. <laughs> With love and compassion this morning, first of all, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? 
We can't get saved unless the Spirit of God is dwelling us and pulling us, drawing us. You can't get saved when you want to. When you feel that tug, you better come running. Oh, I wouldn't think about it. You know when God's tugging at your heart. You know it. In the last days, we are in the last thousand cubit measurements. Our families, that's what church is all about, families. Our loved ones that are lost. We need to pray, God help me, let the rivers flow in me like it has never flowed before. Lord, if it's anything that's causing the rivers not to flow in me, help me. Do I have to go and say, I'm sorry, I hurt you. If I hurt you, I'm sorry. Amen. And if they tell you, I ain't forgiving you, well, you've done your part. Did you hear me? You've done your part. You have done your part. Amen. God help me to be a light in these last days. It ain't who's the pastor, who's the deacons, who's the trustees, a Sunday school teacher, or missionaries, evangelists. It's all about Him. It's all about Him. God will raise you up. He'll set you down. Hello. We are in the last of the last days. God help us. Don't wait till something bad happens. Then we get very religious and call on God. Don't wait till something bad happens. Amen. Let's be ready. Let's be read at all times. If you're here this morning, you lost and undone. God is here to save your soul. Let's all stand. Every head bowed and every eye closed. No one looking around, please. Do you hear the river flowing? sit by the river and you can hear the waters rushing. Or if you hit the ocean, you can hear the waves coming in. My people which are called by my